Hello everyone. In this series, we're going to explore mixing Command Modern Air Navigable Operations and DCS World. Now, I have a pretty good number of the different DCS modules, and I've been playing Command as well as other strategy games for a while. So I finally said, well, I'm kind of curious to see if there's a connection between what we experience in Command, what we experience in DCS, and kind of vice versa. So I'm going to go ahead and disable that real quick, because we don't need to be looking at it. Good. So we have a lone AV-8B Harrier. This is the 2003 version. It's got a lot of the good stuff. He's equipped with a couple of 1,000 uh, pound low drag general purpose bombs. He's also got the little gun pod hanging off the bottom. We're going to keep that in the back of our heads. I've already made a quick note of uh, how much fuel that he's starting with so that it's uh, nice and easy as far as determining fuel usage for the mission. So anyway, let's go ahead and set that mission up. Let's say strike. A, B. We'll go ahead and set this to land strike. Press OK. We're going to go ahead and make sure we're set to single aircraft. Going to go ahead and add that. We don't need any of these targets with the exception of we'll go after the AV gas bunkers. That looks good. So that way we're only targeting those. We can find those in DCS as well. Now we're going to be attacking with low drag general purpose bombs. So the hope is that we are going to be accurate enough to actually do some damage with that. I'm going to go ahead and disable that. And we're good to go. So the time is currently 5.30 a.m. And we're going to take advantage of some time acceleration to see how things play out. Let's go ahead and start. So this guy just left the LHA. He's uh, cruising at about 200 feet. So uh, this is definitely a low altitude cruising strike. We're going to have to remember this when we load it up into DCS. Let's see here. He's almost to his initial point. About, it comes up to about 400 feet. Let's see what he does for the actual bomb strike. He's jumped up to a thousand feet. All right, we'll kind of keep that in mind. Hmm, I'd almost want to be using snake eyes. So there go the bombs. So the time on that one was 5.35. 5.35 a.m. release. Let's just kind of keep that in the back of our heads for a second here. Off they go. Now we have to see if it actually does the deed. And boom. So it looks like we missed by about 42 feet. Okay, just kind of keep that in the back of our heads. We're over the target, of course, with, uh, let's see here, 2989 kilograms. That's 6575.8. So we burnt about 1,000 pounds to get to that point. And then, of course, we want to subtract that from the original. So it's about 1317 pounds burned. Okay, so let's see how long it takes him to get back to the carrier. What's this his altitude? He's staying very, very, very low. Oh, somehow he jumped up to 36,000 for a second there, but I don't think he actually did that. All right, he's going to set down on the carrier deck. We won't actually do the landing at DCS because we know how much time that can take. Setting down on the carrier deck, just about... Now, okay. 5.43 and 36 seconds is our total amount of time. 5.43. 40, oh, I'm sorry. So it took us 13 minutes and 43, I'm sorry, 13 minutes and 36 seconds. Total mission time. All right. So this is our results over here in command. Let's see what happens when we try this mission in DCS. So we've gone ahead and recreated the entire scenario that we saw in Command in DCS. Uh, we're going to be using CCRP today with the uh, designation function on the EHRS, which make our life a little bit simpler. When I was first testing this mission out to try to get a feel for the best way to do it, I actually attempted to do it using CCIP, but that was a little bit too much of a work. So basically what we've done is we've gone ahead and added all the things that were on the aircraft that you saw in command as far as uh, DECM, as well as the uh, munitions up on the wingtips there, and everything is basically exactly the same, including a 7,700-pound fuel tank. Tank. So um, we're going to go ahead and unpause in a second here. And um, we're basically looking to get over the target, dropping the bombs at a 
about 1.35 Zulu time. We'll see what time we actually get there. But you'll see that the um, situation is very, very similar to what we saw before. So um, I'm going to go ahead and unpause. Go ahead and set my speed to about 480 knots is what they used to come in. Better. Okay, love more. Out. Sense. Power. Okay, so we're only about 320 feet off the ground at this point. That point. We're supposed to be coming in at 400. So I'm going to climb just a teeny tiny bit. That should do it almost perfectly right there. You can see we're passing the type on our own class. So just a little tiny bit more thrust. We're a little high, but again, nothing too, too concerning at this particular point. This is a real military operation. That would be too high. But on the flip side, we want to give ourselves just a little start working out the details of the assignment, we'll have the ability to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and flip on the automatic pilot, just to kind of hold this in here so we can get everything else ready. So, let's begin. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over what we're about to do. Go ahead and activate the DMT here. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go ahead and designate the target area by pressing this button right here. What that will do is slave all the points of interest to that point on the ground, which works great for us. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to start setting up my weapon. Go ahead and back here, the store's menu. We're going to go to the part 83, so we have four of them. So when we launch, we're going to make sure we launch four of them. We're going to set them at an interval of about 50 feet, so we get a pretty good spread across the ground. But we're not going to do anything crazy like lofting or anything like that. We're just going to use good old-fashioned um, CCRP. Coming over here, we're going to set the fuse to instantaneous. It's actually not a bad idea to do a delayed fuse when you're doing something that dug into the ground. Like tanks, but we're going to use instantaneous fuse anyway, and leave multiplayer alone, because we're not going to do that. Master arm switch is going to come on, and now we are completely ready to go. We're actually going a little too fast than we just that. So that's about it as far as setup goes. So I'm going to go ahead and now proceed to my target area there, the one we have for the oh. infrared. Oh. It's going to give me a little heads up saying hello again, which yeah, I don't blame you. We are a bit on the low side. And uh, that's about it. You can't see a thing, which is not unusual. Nothing too so again, we're looking to drop those bombs at about 135. So I think we're a little late at this point. Uh, let me just get my speed stabilized. Much, much tougher to get your speed stabilized than when you're trying to do other things inside the aircraft itself. We're entering into hostile territory, so I'm going to make sure that my jammer is set to uh, reply mode. Keep in mind, with this style of electronic countermeasures, basically, you're just giving it permission to jam if something comes its way. It's not just going to jam on its own. So now we're cruising at the same speed, we we'll fast. About the same speed we were in command, so let's go ahead and Just about up to the coast of Georgia. Take a look over on my left here. Everything is set correctly. Fusing is set correctly, interval is set correctly. <laughs> it's just a matter of showing up. Uh, once we cross the coastline right there, I'm going to go ahead and flip everything back on to air ground mode for heads up display. So we can get a little bit more information once we get closer. Kind of a hurry up and wait, just like everything, right? Alright, let's go ahead and flip this over to your ground mode. Out. Out. Good morning, it surprised me because I was right Out. about to cross the coast. You can see that very, very carefully right there. Out. Okay. Out. 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 This is going to be interesting. So, if you remember in command, this aircraft flew basically 400 feet over the ground and then popped up at the last possible second to do its drop. Um, we could do that with a loft. Yeah, we're just going to use conventional CCRP at this particular point. It's kind of interesting because, um, depending on the resolution that you have, it can be very, very challenging to kind of make out some of the details here. And obviously, it's uh, pretty sketchy looking. Going a little fast again, which, you know, it's not unusual in enemy territory. It makes me a little bit nervous. Good so far. Got nothing to complain about. Beyond target in about less than. Just about a minute and a half, and I was actually going to be slightly less. We're slightly off of where we need to be for this drop, but that's okay. One last uh, common sense check here. Right, looks good, looks good, looks good. Everything is set the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's just a matter of uh, kind of counting away a minute and a half kind of a thing. 
A lot of times what I'll do is I'll set a timer to you once we get to that point. Go ahead and stop watch this for a moment. We get 60 seconds. It's always kind of fun. Remember in command, after traveling to 50 miles, we dropped that bomb, like I said, about 5.30. seconds to go, we'll do a pop-up 2,000 feet. Alright, let's do it. Gently up 2,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and pickle now in case something comes up. There's 1,000 right now. Try not to have negative Gs when you uh, drop the bombs, of course. That's about as steady as I'm going to get a little bit to the right. Gentle, gentle. The drop at. Let's move the windows up right there. See how we did? There's the fuel tank farm. Oh! <laughs> that certainly isn't going to completely destroy the farm, but it's certainly going to do more than enough damage to put some of it out of commission. And there's probably going to be a pretty sizable fire. Alright, now we've got to get out of here as fast as possible. Because um, chances are Georgian air defenses have already been scrambled. Unfortunately for us, they've come all the way from Tbilisi to actually get here, so I'm not too, too concerned. I actually want to be able to see the road as I do this journey here. Alright, so we're going to head back to the Ticonderoga. Pull up, pull up. So we had about 6,500 pounds of fuel remaining when we pull did our drop. Up, up. As far as I'm um, comparing this drop to the one in command, pull up, pull up. clearly this one was a little bit more accurate than the one in command, which doesn't surprise me, but at the same token as it's just a demonstration of how incredible the avionics on this particular aircraft actually are. And again, if our targeting information wasn't good, or we're trying to do a CCIP as opposed to a CCRP release, it would have been a very, very different experience. I need to find a button on my joystick for that. <laughs> I feel like I'm an A-10. Alright, so um, you're probably wondering, um, why am I not heading to the other waypoint? I'll show you why in just a second. I'm going to shut this off now. I think I just passed it because it was very low. The reason being is that my ship has moved since we they kind of set out to do all this stuff. Yeah, which is an inverted. Ah! <laughs> so we're actually tracking the radar signal of our ship itself in order to make our way back to our destination. And I can actually choose to not make it out in the horizon. Just about make it out on the horizon, actually. Just look really, 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 really careful. We need to get back down to 400 feet. Going a little fast also. Set up to land back at you know, probably Kutazi or something like that. Dice, I believe it's Kutaz. But anyway, let's continue. 480 again. Um, like I said, our time over target when this one was exactly perfect. Go ahead and stop this not much there. We don't that anymore. Our time over target was identical to what it was in command if you were watching, and our total fuel usage I think is going to actually be fairly close. We've got about 6,000 pounds left. I think uh, we had just a little bit less when we actually did landing. Of course, if we try to do a proper landing with this thing, we can see a little bit more fuel. Um, really, really carefully. Let's see what we can see here. You can 
can see the carrier, it's pretty much this little speck right here. And we can see the destroyer, which is that little speck right there. So again, it's uh, difficult to see to say the least, but at the same token, it's you know, not possible. Get rid of that real quick. We're flying a little high here, but our speed is perfect, so I clearly don't want to mess with it. Put that back on real quick, just make sure we're going right, right into the going. That's pretty good. Going down here, yeah, about 50, it's going to be about 58 or 5,700 pounds when I finally actually do that this thing. But you can see, if you remember, our total mission time was about 13 and a half minutes, and it looks like we're going to come very, very close to that. So I've got to give it a little bit of credit for being that consistent. And also, the little toss method they used in the band was very similar to the toss method that we ended up using as well. So it's all really, really good stuff. You can just about make out the Taikon right there. The LHA is pretty much straight ahead. Yeah, I can see it pretty good now. Of course, we can accelerate and burn a little more fuel off and attempt to accept the vertical landing, but right now we're around 2,000 pounds. We're just not going to be able to pull it off. A little tiny bit of trim. So uh, hopefully this has been enlightening. I'd say that you know, Command does a pretty good job of uh, simulating the situation. I'd also say that we did a pretty good job as far as uh, engaging the actual targets themselves. Um, it definitely shows how effective this aircraft is. It definitely shows that even during difficult lighting conditions, you would still be fairly successful. Obviously, if we had a situation where the ship itself, I should say not the ship, where we had wind, that would have made things interesting. If we had air defenses, that would have made things interesting. And it's definitely going to be something checking out at a later time. But for now, I think this has been a pretty good comparison. Again, if you wanted to use a command to kind of pre-test missions out in DCS, I think there's a lot of potential for that. And I've actually used command for that purpose in the past to try to create, you know, like, big Georgia 2008 scenarios and things like that. But they can get a little unwieldy once they get past a certain size. So I'll just kind of keep that in mind. This is always fun to do, too. Thing, fun things to do while you're bored with the yeah, nuclear aircraft. Can we find it? There's a problem. This oh, there he is. Ha <laughs> ha! Lock! <laughs> At least it makes him a little bit easier to see, I guess. Maybe the number off the side. Ah, oh, there it is, right there. Not too bad, not too bad at all. I'm sure he doesn't appreciate his logging onto him with our targeting camera. Actually, this makes it a little easier to see where he is in the distance, so I'll have to remember this is a strategy. So, uh, if our calculations were correct, we should be... Hey, locked onto him! Finally! So if our calculations are correct, we should be arriving at the LHA within the next, basically, 30 seconds. But, um, looks like we're going to be pretty much identical in time. So, Command definitely gets a point, DCS definitely gets a point today. So you can see that things were really, really, really well. Go ahead, buzz it real quickly. Perfect. Look at that. Four seconds difference. Let's go ahead and quit. And let's see how we did. So let's see here. 530. Our tank was struck a little bit later than it was in command. That kind of doesn't surprise me. But you can see how much damage I did. And we can see two of the tanks got hit flat out. Another one of the tanks got hit right over here. Apparently we got a uh, truck and we also damaged a barbed wire fence. All right. Hopefully you guys found that kind of enlightening. In the future I'd like to explore things like surface-to-air missile defenses and maybe even dogfighting. Enjoy.